in order for the Diels-Alder reaction to work, the conformation of the diene is very, very important. The conformation of the diene has to be in the cis conformation, S cis conformation. And the reason why it has to be in the S cis conformation is because it needs to get these carbons right here in close proximity to one another so it can form that bond simultaneously. But when you take a look at this molecule here or the diene in its S trans conformation shown here, to see how the distance now between those carbons right there is now longer. And that distance prevents the reaction from occurring. Un unfortunately, though, for the, the Dilsalder reaction, when you have a diene, 98% of dienes, of your diene, is going to be in the S trans conformation because it's the more stable conformation. <clears throat> but in that S trans, we are not going to get a reaction to occur. So there's a small amount of our diene, 2%, that's going to be in the S cis conformation, which then is in the correct conformation, so it can do the deals all the reaction. Now, why is this so important? Because in this example, we are at equilibrium. So we can just, boom, put the molecule in there, and we know the butadiene is going to be at equilibrium with the S cis and the S trans, and we can get a reaction to occur because we're going to eventually get some of this, right? Well, some molecules cannot go from S trans to S cis. And this molecule right here is a prime example. What we have here is a S trans diene. But this will not undergo a Dills Alder reaction because it is locked in a S trans conformation. The ring, okay, when you have rings together, there is no free rotation around that single bond there. It is the rings that prevent bond rotation. So it's locked and it cannot do Dills all the reaction. Another thing that we need to be aware of that sometimes we cannot get a S cis conformation with a diene due to sterics. So here we have our S trans conformation there. You can see that it is S trans right there. And it won't do a Dills Alder reaction. So, well, what if there is free bond rotation around that single bond? But what happens when we do that? These methyl groups right here are big and bulky and they can get in the way. And so if we did rotate around that single bond there. Look at where the methyl groups are going to end up. There's going to be major steric strain. Now compare that to butadiene right here. Not too much steric stress or strain because there's hydrogen atoms there. But if you change those to one of those to a methyl, shown in here and we can get some problems. Okay. So that can influence a Dills-Alder reaction. There are other Dills-Alder reactions where the diene is locked in a S cis conformation right here. Isn't that cool? So that's locked because it's locked in an S cis. That means 100% of the cyclopentadiene is in its S cis conformation. So it makes the Dills Alder reaction go more readily. And so we can see that it's going to make our cyclic compound. Now, 
At this point of the game, don't worry about the nomenclature. Okay? I don't want to worry about that in this video here. But we do make a, a bicyclo compound. Now we call it a bicyclo compound because there's multiple rings here. Okay? So what I want you to see here is I'm going to trace the five-membered ring. So okay, so there's the five-membered ring. Where is it in the bicyclo compound? You see that? There's the five-membered ring. Where is it in this conformation or the way we drew it? Right there it is. What else do we have? We have a six-membered ring. Right there, right? That's a six-membered ring. I didn't trace that very well. Let's redo it. And then we can see it right here. There's our six-membered ring. Now this carbon right here is that one right there. And that came from that one right there. So what's happening here is we are we have a five-membered ring and a six-membered ring. And what combines or connects those together okay, is a bridgehead carbon. Okay. Those bridgehead carbons is what attached this piece. Okay. So we have bridgehead carbons, and the bridgehead carbons are important to identify because they help us in the nomenclature, which we will talk about later. Okay, But I need you to be able to identify the bridgehead carbons. And the bridgehead carbons are the ones that have formed the bond with the dienophile. See that? Okay. Let's take a look at another example. Let's kind of get our minds and eyes used to seeing these reactions here. First thing I want to point out are these two carbons right here. Do you see how they, those are right there? All right. So now what we have is a six-membered ring, two six-membered rings here. Here's our first one. There's a six-membered ring there. And then there. So that ring that I just traced, that six-membered ring is going to be right there. And then this six-membered ring is going to be, whoa. Why can't I do this? Right there. All right. Can you see that? It's really important to be able to see how molecules come together and form their products. Okay, the next video we're going to talk about increasing the rate of a Dills Alder reaction simply by adding substituents on the dye.